amen. It's good to see you tonight. Glad to be in the house of God. Say amen. amen. All right. Had to get those folks in the foyer after I chew in the back. I'd get on here now dipping snuff and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Uh, I don't think that's going on out there. But anyway, it's good to be in the house of God, right? Appreciate you being here tonight, and I trust uh, you've had a good afternoon and a good day. And, uh, of course, it's uh, getting a little bit warm. It's the kind of weather Miss Baker likes. She likes hot weather. It gets below 80, she's freezing to death. And uh, one time I told her, the Lord might send us Alaska. She said, he's going to send you. <laughs> and uh, But anyway... I'm just glad to be here also. We're going to pray, and then uh, we'll sing a couple of songs, and I'll introduce our visitors. We've got some visitors tonight here. They park back here, and uh, I'll introduce them in just a few moments, okay? Uh, it's 413 in your songbook, and as you turn there, we're going to pray and ask God to bless the service. Lord Jesus, it's been a wonderful day, a day that you've given us, and I pray now, Lord, as we head toward the sunset uh, here in the house of God, that, Lord, you'll meet with us as you always do. Lord, help us to never, ever take your presence for granted. Lord, we need you more than ever, especially, Lord, in our church services. So please, Holy Spirit, once again, enable everything here, Lord, to give Jesus honor and glory as only you can. In thy name we pray, amen and amen. Let's all stand and sing 413, Love Lifted Me. All right, and while you stand, and whenever you get down to the lift it part, lift up a little bit, get the blood flowing in your legs a little. Yeah and get woke up a little bit. I was seeking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the waters lifted me, now save it. Fellas, love your wife. Yeah. All right, but you're going to have to lift her in a few minutes, okay? <laughs> Sing another song, Chris. We'll turn back to 411. Look and live. <laughs> Page number 411. Sing the first, second, and last. Yeah. 
past. I will tell you how I came, hallelujah, to Jesus when he made me whole. Plus believing on his name, hallelujah, I trusted and he saved my soul. Well, just a few announcements to make, and then we'll have uh, uh, another congregational song, then the Threens family will come and sing a couple of songs for us. And we do have uh, uh, some visitors with us tonight, uh, David and Susan Smeltz, I think I pronounced that right, Smeltz, and they're back here in their camper uh, coming through for the night, be leaving tomorrow. And I wish we had time to really give him some time to uh, share a few things with us, but I'm going to... Talk with him. He's going to come back some at a later date and really be with us and share his minister with us. I, he gave me a book uh, about a uh, new convert class. I looked through it. it looks it's, That's good stuff, preacher. I like it. Amen. But we're sure glad to have you and your wife with us here tonight. It's a real joy. Hope you enjoy your stay back there. And just remember, it's always there if you need it, okay? And uh, so uh, we're sure glad to meet you. And I enjoyed talking with you today. And uh, he's... Uh, He's, he's been preaching, and he's been an evangelist, a pastor, been to all kind of foreign countries, and God's really is using him, not has been, but really is using he and his wife, and so I'm sure uh, glad to have him here tonight, okay? Uh, don't forget now, this coming Sunday, uh, we'll be voting on our Christian Lady of the Year. We've been doing this now for several, several years. Started out uh, really as Mother of the Year, then I come to realize we have some ladies in our church who are... Uh, up in years whose kids have grown and gone a long time ago and then some mothers some ladies who've never had any children couldn't and so I thought well we'll we'll include them by having the Christian lady of the year and so uh, uh, we'll be doing that on this coming Sunday so you be much in prayer about that and uh, anyway and then also this coming Sunday night after the service uh, brother Davis the contractor I told you spoke with you about on this past Sunday night gave me a call and uh, he's ready to come and be with us and he's going to come and share with you and I uh, the action what you're going to see is what the that we're going to we're going to we're having to replace the whole flooring in the building about from middle ways all the way back and we've got some cracks in the ceiling and we're going to go ahead and look at a remodeling of the auditorium and our main thing this coming Sunday night will be what the ceiling's going to look at. Did I make a mistake? What's my laughing about? Oh, the, up here? Well, I wasn't going to mention that. Chris said, you think anybody will notice it? Nah, nobody will notice that. Well, Chris was ha having to do, do some stuff up there for the PA system, and he had a misstep. <laughs> And I said, don't feel bad, Chris. It's the auditorium. It is a little bit different than the hallway, but back where the secretary's office is back years ago, I fell through the whole place, just fell through it. And so that was not a thrilling day for me either. But anyway, we'll get that taken care of, and uh, we're going to look at But our main thing Sunday night will be the ceiling part, okay? The other stuff we'll, we can talk about another time. I want you to see it, and we're not going to vote on anything. just want you to see it, and he'll ask maybe any questions that you can answer about the ceiling and uh, what, we're, what, we're the, what we're just looking at, okay? And uh, if you like it, that's fine. If you don't, that's okay, too. We'll go from there. Amen. I like these babies over here. Amen. Yeah. She, she's having a hard time. She does not want to leave South Carolina. She wants to stay. Amen. All right. Let me see your uh, other announcements. Uh, uh, Kenny Falkenberry's home, and uh, he's doing, doing uh, what you might say, better, doing good, Deborah said. I went by to see him today, and he had just taken his, <laughs> Deborah said, he just took out his knockout medicine. I said, praise God for that. Amen. And uh, uh, here comes, uh, here comes the bride <laughs> and her groom. Amen. Yeah, y'all keep praying for Sister Alice now. She's having a hard time with that back. 
and uh, you pray for her, okay? All right. I think that's all the announcements we have right now. We're going to have another congregational song, and then we'll have the three ends come sing for us. All right, we're going to try this one out. You can remain seated, page number 416, 416. I'm going to let the ladies play through it one time for us so we can get the rhythm of it, and we'll sing it after they get done. Sing it twice. song I, I knew the words to it I just didn't know you know I couldn't care a tune to dump truck you know that don't you already and uh, all right brother three why don't you and your family come sing a few songs for us and then uh, we'll have a little break and give you a chance to get your thoughts together and come preach to us amen so they're going to come and uh, all right we had another check come in today for camp meeting for that Tuesday night offer for the Bible remember the paper we bought for the, uh, give bearing precious seed and uh, two printing companies, some paper, and another thousand dollars came in today to buy some more paper. Ain't that good? Uh, Whoopee! I like it. I like it. Hey, Amen. How you doing? Hey, Amen. How you doing? Doing good. Get me a microphone. Mess this family up, but I do. Uh, yeah. Amen. Amen. It was good to be here tonight. Yes, it is. I didn't know we're going to be here. We're glad to be here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, blessing to hear it. Uh, kind of feels like we'll be pulling out on Friday. It kind of feels like we're leaving home. Oh, boy. Yeah. Sure appreciate you folks. Let's, let's sing it. Let's sing I'm amazed. Aren't you amazed? I'm amazed. Yes, amen. Let's sing it. Imagine a God who built a master plan To pay the sacrifice for fallen man 
Oh, what a mighty price that he did pay when Jesus freely shed his blood that day. I am amazed at what my God has done. He loved me so much he gave his only son to die on a rugged cross to set me free. I am amazed at what he did for me. Jesus laid in a borrowed tomb for three days. The people all thought he'd been stolen away. When they looked inside, there was nobody there. The tomb had an echo. It was silent and bare. He's gone down to hell with the keys in his hand. He's like death away in eternity's prison. The grave has been conquered for every man. Amen. That tomb is still empty where Jesus once lay. to this very day. No one could explain it, but they knew it was true. Jesus rose from the dead like he said he would do. Gone, gone, Jesus has risen, ascended to heaven to the Father's The grave has been conquered for every man. He's gone, gone. Jesus has risen. He's gone to heaven to the Father's right hand. He's locked death away in eternity's prison. The grave has been conquered for every man. The grave has been conquered for. sing 
Behold our God. We serve a great God. That's right. Amen. Amen. And he's get our eyes on him, get our eyes off ourselves and off the world. Get our eyes back on him. We'll see his greatness. Amen. That's right. There's no God like our God. Amen. None like Him, none whatsoever. I, and, I, and that great God lives in us. Yes. I, I, sooner, I mean, when you realize how that God lives inside of you, you can have victory like you've never known it before. 
Well, anyway, that's just a great song with a great message in it about our great God. Well, we're going to sing one more song, a couple of verses of a song, and then we'll have a few moments of fellowship, and then Brother Therena come and preach to us tonight. Amen. Chris, what number we got? 429. 429. Let's all stand and sing. We'll sing the first and last of the Onward Christian Soldier. Folks act like saved people. All this friendly stuff going on. I'm telling you one thing: if this ain't real, y'all the biggest hypocrites walking two legs. But I think it's real, amen. amen. I don't think it's a hypocrite in a whole bunch. Not one, amen. All right. Well, we're gonna have some preaching now. How about that? I asked Brother Mark today. I said, "Well, you're gonna be here, folks. Would love to, love to hear you one more time. I believe. I believe you would. I hope you will. And uh, if he starts out and doesn't and, and messes up." We'll just stop him and, and let the visiting preacher pick up. And if he strikes out, we'll let Miss Baker pick it up. No, Vonnie says she's ready to preach tonight. Amen. All right. Well, preacher, come on up here and uh, share with us, you know, what God's given you. It's good to have you. They've been here for two weeks now. 
And they do feel like family to me. I sure appreciate this family. So sit up straight, get your Bibles out. Let the man of God preach to you. Preacher, it's good having you. Amen. Thank you, preacher. Sure love you folks, and uh, been great to be here. I'd have been just as happy to sit and listen to Preacher Baker tonight or, uh, or our brother that's visiting. But uh, we trust the Lord. Amen. Amen. He, Amen. Uh, he knows what he's doing and, and uh, follow the leadership of the pastor, and you won't get in trouble that way. Amen. Amen. If he gets it wrong, that's on him, not you. So uh, some people ask me, what's the difference between pastoring and evangelism? That's it right there. And uh, uh, But I thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for, for the opportunity to preach tonight. Revelation chapter 11 tonight. Revelation chapter 11. And... Uh, Brother Stanfield, if you'll hang around after the service, we'll sing, Send the Rain. Now, he was looking forward to hearing that camp meeting week, and he wasn't able to be at the service that we sang it in. And we didn't sing it very good that night anyway, so you didn't miss much. But we'll try to do a better job tonight, amen? And after the service, we'll get together, get the kids up here, and we'll sing, we'll sing that song for you. Revelation chapter 11. And we'll begin reading in verse number 3, read down through verse 12. Stand with me if you will, if you're able, as we read God's Word together. The Bible says, And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks, standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth, and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. When they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them, and kill them. And Their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. They of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. They that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them, and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. And after three days and a half, the Spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. They heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. I want to preach tonight on the marks of a true witness. Marks of true witnesses. I understand the context we're dealing with tonight, uh, but I believe that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God Amen. and is profitable. Even though they we're looking for, uh, forward to a future day here, in the passage, I believe there's something here for us tonight. Amen? So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today. Thank you, God, for your spirit. God, thank you for forgiveness through Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for his comfort. Thank you for his guidance and leadership. And Lord, you promised to lead us and guide us into all truth. So, Father, I pray that tonight we would be, we would be attentive to your spirit as we look at the truth of your word tonight. I pray that we'd be challenged, dear God. I know that my heart is challenged when I consider these two great witnesses that you will raise up one day. And Lord, I want to be a true witness in my day. And uh, Lord, I pray that you would help us all to have a great desire to stand for you in these last days and uh, before you come again. And uh, Lord, to not be ashamed of you. And uh, to have your power upon us, Lord, that we might make a difference 
in the world in which we live. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. Let me just say that I believe in the pre-tribulation rapture of the church. And so we read these verses here tonight. We understand uh, that uh, this is 40 and 2 months into the uh, tribulation, the seven-year tribulation period, and uh, three and a half years. And God is going to raise up two witnesses, and these two witnesses are remarkable men. Now, there's a lot of uh, uh, conjecture on who the two witnesses will be. Uh, some believe they're Elijah and Moses, uh, and I tend to agree with that, but uh, some believe that uh, it's Enoch and Elijah, because they were the two that did not die, and uh, they die here. Uh, whatever, it doesn't really matter who they are. Uh, what matters is what they do. Yes, and can I say that to us tonight? It doesn't really matter who we are. What really matters is what we do. That's it's it. not about us. No. It's not about our name being recognized. It's about us being a faithful witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus went back to heaven, as He ascended up, just before He ascended up, He said, uh, Ye shall be witnesses unto Me. And uh, that's what we are supposed to be in this world in which we live. Now, I don't know about you, but when I consider my own life, uh, witnessing is one of the areas of my life that I feel needs a great, great uh, uh, push. Amen? I feel so far behind uh, when it comes to this area of witnessing. And as I was looking at this and uh, allowing the Lord to speak to my heart, I want to be a good witness. I want to be a faithful witness. And a witness is going to have to stand up for the truth regardless of what the world says, regardless of what, uh, what the popular opinion is. And these two men are going to stand in these days. They're going to stand in a very unpopular time when, it, when it's uh, not popular to stand for the Lord. Uh, but they're going to stand anyways. And I want us to look at them briefly tonight. Uh, first, The first thing I want us to see about these witnesses is that they, uh, they have life. They have life. Uh, they're mentioned in verse 4. It says, these are the two olive trees. Uh, two olive trees. A tree has life. And uh, these witnesses, a mark of a true witness is he has life. And when we're speaking of life, we're not just speaking about physical life. I'm talking about spiritual life. Uh, there's no way to be a witness for the Lord until you know the Lord. A witness tells what he has seen or heard and experienced. And, uh, you know, it's hard to, to tell about the Lord and to talk about His salvation when we've not received that salvation ourselves. And tonight, I know it's a Wednesday night, and I know this is the cream of the crop, uh, but, you know, I was considered the cream of the crop before I got saved, too. Uh, I needed to be born again. And growing up in church and being raised in church and understanding the, uh, the, the uh, biblical concepts of salvation does not mean that you are saved. Uh, you've got to come to a point in time in your life when you realize that you are a sinner who stands condemned in the eyes of God and you, by, by act of your own will, have to place your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, in the finished work of Calvary, if you're ever going to be born again. These two witnesses have life, and not just life, but they have an anointing upon them. They are the two olive trees. And you study this out, we won't take the time tonight, but you study it out through Scripture. And uh, many times through Scripture you see an anointing, uh, olive oil being used as an anointing upon uh, His servants. And these these men of God have an anointing upon them. You know, many times we talk about uh, the anointing of the Lord and being filled with the Spirit, and we talk about it in, in the context of preachers and how preachers need to be filled with the Spirit, and that's so true. Uh, but it's not just preachers who need to be filled with the Spirit. If we're going to be the witnesses that we ought to be, we're going to have to have the anointing of the Holy Ghost upon us. That's not a strange, weird doctrine. Uh, that's a Bible doctrine. These men have uh, the anointing of the Lord upon them. And I find it interesting that from the very beginning, when the Lord was choosing someone to speak for Him, 
uh, he always brought about an anointing upon his life. You see it with the kings and you see it with the priests. Those who stand in a position, even prophets, you see anointing upon them. And when you look at those three positions in the Old Testament, prophet, priest, king, uh, those are the three positions that our Lord Jesus Christ occupies. And even the Lord Jesus had the anointing of the Spirit upon him. And if Jesus needed the anointing of the Spirit of God to fulfill the work of God, then surely we need the anointing of God to fulfill the work of God that He's given us to do. They also are called the two candlesticks. Two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. This speaks of light. They're shining for the Lord in a dark time. Listen, we're in a dark time today. We're in a very dark time today. Sunday morning, uh, I was up at uh, we were up in Lexington at Gethsemane Baptist Church, and I preached Sunday morning. The Lord laid on my heart a message about suicide. And th- listen, this thing, this is the thing nobody wants to talk about, but it's sweeping through our land, and now it's touching our churches, yes, it and it's touching our pulpits, yes, sir. and it, it's just, it's just a, it's an epidemic. You say, what's the, what, why is there so much suicide in the world today? Because of the darkness that's upon our land. Right. Suicide is demonic. Yes, it it's is. demonic influence upon the mind. We are living in a dark day. When they call good evil and evil good. They look at a family like mine and see evil. They look at a family like yours and see evil. And then they look at this convoluted uh, confusion that they call a family these days. Two men and two women and children given to them. And they look at that and they call that good. My friend, we're living in dark days. Dark days. Here it, it, it compares in our text. He talks about Jerusalem, and he says it's called spiritually Sodom and Egypt. Jerusalem was supposed to be the the headquarters of holiness, if you will, upon the earth. And yet it becomes so dark, and it's going to become so uh, dark in those days that the places where where light should shine uh, is overrun with darkness. It's happening in our churches. We need to take a stand for the Lord. To count on me, Lord, I'll shine for you. Yes. This little light of mine, yeah. I'm going to let it shine. Amen? Don't hide it under a bushel. Don't be afraid of the, uh, of, of the world. Don't be ashamed of the Lord. Let your light shine. Yes. Amen. These men who are true witnesses, who are going to be true witnesses for the Lord, uh, they're going to shine in a dark time. And you know... Listen, we, we know all the all the uh, the concepts regarding light, and uh, in in dark times it doesn't take much light uh, to to really provide a contrast. And uh, you know, you say, well, what can I do? I'm just one. What what can we do? We're just one family. What can we do? We're just one church. And in the midst of a dark world. You let your light shine. You'll be amazed how God will use you. These two men right here are going to have great influence upon the entire earth without ever stepping foot outside of Jerusalem. As far as we know, they'll never leave this place. God puts them there in Jerusalem. They're going to witness and testify for the Lord in Jerusalem, their entire ministry. They'll never travel abroad but they'll let their light shine where God planted them and they'll have an have a influence upon the entire world. Yeah. Amen. You don't have to be a missionary or evangelist to, to make a difference. That's right. now, if God calls you to be that, then be that and, and, uh, and, and sell all you have and, and go where God sends you. But God might just want you right here. Yeah. Yeah. And your light here is very important. Let your light shine. Yes, it is. Be a true witness for the Lord. These two witnesses not only were characterized by life and by light, but by power. You see in verse 3 it says, And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. They're going to... They're going to uh, 
witness for those three and a half years uh, at the beginning of the tribulation. And they are going to, uh, the Bible says they're going to, the Lord's going to give them power, power to prophesy, power to preach, stand up for the truth, and declare the truth to the world. Uh, you know, the, the scripture, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's given to all of us. It is. It is. Lois, we understand the Bible has clear uh, instructions regarding uh, uh, leadership within the church, and he doesn't suffer. The Bible says, "Don't suffer a woman to teach or to usurp authority over the man in the church house." And we still believe that, don't we, preacher Baker? Amen. Amen. We still believe that, yeah. but that doesn't mean you ladies aren't preachers. You're still preachers. That's right. You know what? The, you know the most important congregation you have is your own children. The hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. Ever hear that one? You ought to be preaching the gospel to those youngins. Amen. And uh, preaching the gospel to your family. We are all called to be preachers of the gospel. We need the power of God in order to do that. Verse 6, it says, well, verse 5, it talks about their, the type of power they're given. It says, if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. If any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. You know, the Bible's compared to a fire. And boy, you, you want to just, uh, you want to you uh, kill, uh, kill the flesh and Kill the influence of the world, just put the word of God to it. Verse 6, he says, These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, just as Elijah did. He prayed, and for three and a half years it didn't rain. And it's going to happen again. They have power over waters to turn them to blood, just like Moses did and to smite the earth with all plagues like Moses did, as often as they will. What is this? It's the power of God. Would anyone say tonight, if they were asked about you and about your life, would anyone say that they have the power, that you have the power of God upon your life? Now, I know that the Lord is not working through us in these days to send plagues, turn water into blood, and all of those things. But He is still giving us power to live a godly life. He still gives us power to accomplish what He's called us to do. And I wonder if anyone looking at our lives would say, that person has the power of God upon them. We need His power because it's His power that does the miraculous. It's not our power. It's not our strength. It's not our wisdom. It's the power of God. How we need His power. Now, a few other things I want to point out. They're characterized by life, and by light, by power. And then... They're characterized by being hated and attacked. True witnesses, true witnesses for the Lord are always going to be hated by this world. You look out and you watch out for any preacher, so-called preacher, that everybody loves. And the world has no, no bad thing to say about them. You look out for that one. Because I don't think he's a... True prophet of the Lord. Real, real witnesses for the Lord are hated. Hated. It's always been that way. Now you say, well then preacher, how come I want this, I want to be a true witness? Because they may be hated by the world, but they're loved by their Lord. It says here that Verse 7, it says, And when they shall have finished their testimony. We'll speak on that in just a minute. It says, The beast that ascended out of the 
ascendeth out of the bottomless pit, shall make war against them, and shall overcome them, and kill them. Their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Look what they do. They that uh, dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. Listen, when they finish their work, God's going to allow them to be killed. And the world is going to so hate these men that they're going to let their bodies lie in the street. Nobody's going to care enough about them to bury them. They want them lying in the street because them lying in the street uh, to them means that they have overcome these men who tormented them. You know what? They got it all wrong. Those men weren't tormenting them. They're tormenting themselves. And sinners always will blame the saints for the wages of their sin. Isn't that, isn't that something, you know, it's real easy for us, and all of us can fall into this at times. We can get blaming someone else for the wages of our sins. Yeah. Listen, just because I tell you you're going to reap what you sow doesn't mean I sowed your field. Amen. Amen. Just because the preacher says you're going to reap what you sow, you sow to the flesh, you are of the flesh going to reap corruption, that doesn't mean he sowed your field. You still sowed your field. Amen. You got your you only got yourself to blame. I've only got myself to blame. Sinners only have themselves to blame for the wages of their sin. And yet, they'll look at true witnesses of the Lord, just as Ahab did Elijah, say, so You're the troubler of Israel. That's right. Elijah says, I'm not troubling Israel, you are. You've forsaken God. Our nation has forsaken God. Sure and yet the world looks at us and they say, well, if we could just get rid of those Christians, we'd have it made. Once they're rid of us, it's going to get really bad. Oh, yeah. That's right, we're the ones withholding the judgment. As long as we're here, God's not going to pour out His wrath. Because we're not appointed under wrath. Amen. 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 Praise God for that. Amen. They're going to rejoice. Why? Because they hated the men of God. Ahab hated Micaiah. He said, he never tells me what I want to hear. So he hated him. He thought that the message was the problem. And uh, I remember years ago, I was just uh, just getting going uh, playing golf. And I st- I'm still no good at it, but I was worse then. And uh, <clears throat> So we were playing golf, and I was, it was me and my dad, and there's another preacher there with us. My, one, one of my brothers was there. And, uh, and I hit a shot, and it went way off. I had a terrible slice. They all just... Finally, I got, I got smart, and I started hitting over the other fairway and come back on the, on the fairway. <laughs> and uh, and, I, and I, I remember this, this day, I kept, they just all went that way. And I said, well, this is crazy. This club here, I don't like this club. That preacher said, uh, he said, it's not the arrow, it's the Indian. It's <laughs> <laughs> not the arrow, it's the Indian. You know, and it, listen, it's not, it's, not, it's not the preacher's fault that you're in sin or that you're experiencing the wages of those sin. The world thinks the, the, that uh, the, the people of God are the problem. And so therefore we're hated and we're attacked. And, and when they're rid of us, they're going to think that they have accomplished a great thing. All of these uh, bombings that happened on Easter Sunday, all these Christians killed. Uh, listen, that broke my heart. And there was all this outpouring from those who hate Christians, a fake outpouring. Oh my, what a terrible thing. But you know, in their hearts, they're not thinking it's a terrible thing because we're looked down as the problem. 
And if the world ever loves us, you better look and see what you're doing wrong. Because we're told, the Lord said they hated me, they're going to hate you too. And uh, don't try to be, you know, don't go out of your way to, to be hateful, amen? Love people and try and show them the love of Christ, but don't expect love in return. That's right. You're not going to get love in return. That's right. I remember we'd go out and be laboring this point, but uh, we'd go out on the street corner and when I was pastoring. We'd get out there with our, with our gospel signs, and, and every one of them, I made sure our gospel signs gave the gospel. They didn't attack people for some specific sin that they were involved in. We just gave the gospel. Wages of sin is death, but the gift of God yeah. is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And we had one, one sign that said, Jesus loves you. And somebody drove by and they said, they said uh, get your hate off the street. I said, man, they can't even read the sign. <laughs> It doesn't say Jesus hates you. It doesn't say we hate you. We love you or we wouldn't be here. That's right. But the more you love, the less you'll be loved by this world. That's right. Don't let it deter you. That's right. Don't let it change your message. Don't let it uh, hide your, your uh, candle under a bushel. That's right. Don't let it affect you. Stay faithful. Stay true to the calling God's given you. Be a witness for the Lord. The fifth thing I see here is that the mark of a true witness is they will endure. They will endure. You know, we're living in a day and a time when folks will not endure sound doctrine. And uh, they are not going to endure unto the end. But these two men, the Bible says in verse 7, and when they have finished their testimony. You know what I want to say? I want to say along with the Apostle Paul, I have fought a good fight. I've finished my course, and I've kept the faith. I stayed faithful until the finish. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to be. And listen, uh, we don't know when our finish line comes. You look at me, and uh, some of you in here tonight, you're older than me. You might think that your finish line is, uh, is sooner than mine, but mine might come before yours. We don't have any guarantee of tomorrow. We don't know when our race is going to be finished. On this earth, I want to be faithful until the finish line. Amen. Those who are true witnesses will not quit. Truth. Come on. I believe that. Amen. They may trip and they may fall, but a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. Yes. Amen. Though the righteous fall, yet... He will uh, be upholden by the hand of the Lord, the Bible says. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Though he fall, the Lord will raise him up. Mark of a true witness is someone who just won't quit. The whole world is going to be against these two. The only ones that will be on their side are going to be separated from them. They're going to be off in the wilderness and uh, <clears throat> hiding. And these two men are going to be standing alone against the multitude. They're going to sleep. As far as I can tell, they're going to be sleeping in the street every night. God's going to miraculously provide for them. But they're going to be hated. But they will endure. I like this... Uh, Scripture in Revelation 2, verse 10. Turn over there, you're not far from it. Revelation 2, 10, it says, Fear none of those things. This is the Lord speaking to the church at Smyrna. It said, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried. Ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. I'd rather have the crown of life from the Lord than the corruptible crown of the world. 
Well, you give in, you you throw in the towel, you bow to the pressure, you can you uh, you you uh, compromise your stand, and the world will crown you. But it's a corruptible crown. It's not going to last. Won't be worth it. Amen. I'd rather get a crown for my Lord. Just endure what we have to endure. Staying faithful to God, knowing that He's keeping the record. Amen. Amen. Nothing escapes His eye. He's watching. Now, let me give you two more things we'll be done. Back in Revelation 11, I see that uh, these men are rewarded. Verses 11 and 12, it says, After three days and a half, the Spirit of life from God entered into them. And they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. See, when, when you have the life of God in you to stand, it puts the fear of God in the hearts of the world. Amen. You say, you want them fearing? Yes, because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yes. Yes. They're ever going to get help, they're going to have to fear. And uh, God's going God's to breathe life. The spirit of life from God is going to enter into their bodies. Verse 12, and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. Well, those, those words sound familiar, don't they? Amen. Amen. Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. They were doing this number. Listen. These days, today, they might be laughing at us. They might be doing this. Ha, ha, ha. You say you serve a great God, and yet you're losing, and we're winning. They might even kill us. Right, right. And they might think they're winning. But one day, the graves are going to open. One day, there's going to be a shout from heaven. Come up hither. We're going to go on up. Amen. Amen. And the world's just going to, they're, they're going to be speechless. They're going to be dumbfounded. They're not going to know what hit them. And then just wait till we come back. Amen. <laughs> Leaving this world like Superman. Coming back like the Lone Ranger. Amen. You ever heard that song? We're going to fly through the air. When we leave this world, we're coming back on white horses. Yeah, preacher. Hallelujah. Yeah. There's, there's going to be a, a reckoning day. And uh, for those who have served him, for those who have loved him, have been faithful to him, he's going to give us a reward. To these martyrs, he's going to give a crown of life. And uh, I don't know, maybe I'll be one of those martyrs. I don't know. But I want to be faithful. Whatever God has for me, I want to be faithful. I don't want to dip my colors. I don't want to turn tail and run when the pressure comes and the hard times come. Listen, I know he's watching. And uh, I, want to, I want to be faithful to him. I know there's a great reward coming. And then I want to mention this. These, the marks of, a true, witness, of true witnesses, last of all, they're few. They're few. There's only two here. Just two. Even when the Lord ascended to heaven in Acts chapter 1, when He left this earth after He'd finished His work, throughout His ministry, during His ministry, multitudes followed Him. Didn't they? Multitudes. When He was handing out free fish and bread, and when He was doing miracles, He had multitudes following Him. Do you know who he had at the end? Just a few. You know what he had in that upper room? 120. And it's not going to be popular in these days to be a true witness for the Lord. And I can't promise that you won't have hardships. Actually, I can promise you that you will. Sometimes, listen, it's easier to take when it comes from 
those people out there, but sometimes it'll come from your own kin. Sometimes it'll come from those who used to take sweet counsel together with you in the house of God. That's the times when it really hurts. Let me tell you, let me encourage you, don't quit. Don't quit. Be a faithful witness to the Lord. Remember your calling. He gave you your calling. and He'll give you the grace to get through just to be faithful. Just be faithful. In these last days, my, we need to be a voice for the Lord. Don't be ashamed of the Lord or His testimony. It's difficult when you get out there. It's a lot easier in here because we're on the same team, or at least we're all supposed to be on the same team. Amen? Amen. It's harder when you get out there. Listen, that's where the battle is. This is training ground right here. This is where we come in, we get our marching yes. orders, we get, yes. we get encouraged, yeah. we, get, uh, we get instructions, and then we take what we've learned yes. and we take it out to that battlefield yes. again yes. and stand for the Lord. And I pray and trust tonight we've been encouraged to be a true witness for the Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word tonight. Yes. Thank you, God, yes. for the reminders. Yes. Uh, Lord, that you reward those who are faithful to you. Lord, I, I want to be faithful. We are living in a dark day, but Lord, uh, that allows our light to shine and to reach further than, than ever before. And so Lord, I pray that you would help us be like these witnesses, Lord. God, what they did, they did for you. What they did, they did by you. Lord, uh, uh, Father, I, I pray that uh, each and every one of us would learn from their example here tonight. Thank you for this church, this pastor. and uh, Lord, our friendship, dear God, you've been good to us. And, and uh, thank you for bringing our family this way. God, I pray that you'd keep us all in your will. Uh, Lord, as we follow your direction for our lives each day, Lord, I pray that you'd help us just to uh, be, be careful to keep ourselves in the love of the Lord, keep ourselves uh, in the will of the Lord yes. until you call us home, till we hear that trumpet, that great shout, come up hither. Lord, may we be faithful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Just by our heads. Faithfulness. Wow. The Lord's not looking for talent. Looking for faithfulness. He gives power to faithfulness. Just to be faithful. We need His power. Let's stand to our feet. The Lord speaks to your heart. You come. eyes upon him we have a mansion promised us but it's not promised down here the mansion's for later with those crowns those crowns come from faithfulness every one of them associated with faithfulness be faithful to the Lord his church his book amen they're going to sing this song send the rain that rain speaks of God's heavenly rain. As they sing it, the Lord speaks to your heart. Altar is always open. You mind the Lord as they sing it. Amen. Y'all sing. Your name. I'm tired of a man-made worship.
worship hour. I'm tired. I'm tired of a song without any praise. Where worshiping you is out of place. I'm tired of religious formality. Yeah, yeah. I'm tired. Shame. Send the Holy Ghost in power, send the rain, send the fire, send the wind, send the Holy Ghost in power, send the Lord, you're still the same, so would you revive me through New England? Lord, awaken us again in the Maritimes, stir us one more time, the Northeast and beyond. Say that we want.